Hey there, Annika. My name's Andrew, and I'm the essay corrector here at IELTSpodcast.com. Uh, well done for getting this far in the course with us, and thank you for submitting these, your first essays. So what I'll be doing each time you submit a piece of work is reading through them sentence by sentence and offering you some guidance on how well you responded to the task, how well you structured the writing, and how coherent it was. As well, I'll be talking about how precise the language used was and making some grammatical corrections along the way. All of these things are equally important in IELTS, and in order to score a band 7 or an 8, we need to keep small errors to an absolute minimum. Uh, we need to keep language very precise and accurate and appropriately used. We need to respond fully to every single part of the question, while all the while keeping a well-structured and fluid essay. So let's have a look. Um, I think by this you mean <clears throat> that you you don't mean that. Um, I would actually say here that it is common knowledge that works better. And also, because speaking in the negative sentence, so using not to say that uh, this is a negative sentence, I'm talking about something that does not exist rather than something that does exist. Not only does it make um, writing longer by, incre by including the word not, but it's not very precise. Um, talking about what things aren't instead of talking about what they are leaves them open to interpretation by quite a long way. Saying that something is not brown does not describe its colour. Saying, some, saying that something is orange does describe its colour. So let's stay specific and let's try to leave out negative sentences wherever possible. So it is common knowledge that reading helps, to, helps, I would say, to develop certain skills in children. Semicolon. However, informal writing should only ever start a sentence. However, if you have two complete sentences that are related, you can separate them with a semicolon. So just before however, it's almost always appropriate to use a semicolon. But we'll see this more as we move on through our future essays. However, it is a no-brainer that other pleasurable activities contribute to better development of contribute to better development of cognitive, motor and sensory skills. Okay, great. Um, but this question specifically asks um, about doing enjoyable activities with children and skills and imagination. Although that somehow happened. So we need to make sure we cover all of those points um, in our answer. So down here, again, we focus only on skills. Um, so in order to respond to every part of the question, we should have here picked up on the fact that we're talking about group activities, doing an enjoyable activity with a child, participating in things with children, um, that they can better develop skills and imagination than reading. And then it's a, it's a what ex to what extent do you agree or disagree question. So we have a statement. We must cover all of it, and we must also express to what extent we agree or disagree. Um, so, instead of saying it is a no-brainer, which is quite informal, we could say, however, I believe that other pleasurable activities contribute to, I think, the better development. Contribute to the better development of cognitive, motor, and sensory skills. Um... But I still need a bit about imagination in this to make it good, good. One thing, you, one advantage you do have is that your lexical resource and your grammatical range and accuracy are clearly very good and that will not need that much work, which is good because they're actually the most complex sections. What you need um, is to maybe plan the essay a little bit further at the beginning, just to make sure that you've really thought through the question and that you are able to respond to it as fully as physically possible. Uh, so this essay will discuss how activities, such as, don't use like to give examples. Like is for analogies. Uh, such as playing books, oh sorry, playing with blocks, and 
let's say partaking. Partaking in sports help to develop such skills that reading alone does not. Oh, okay. But it's not things that reading does not develop, because reading certainly does develop skills in imagination. Um, what we're trying to ascertain is which one is better at it. But we mustn't deny that reading devel develops skills in imagination. Reading has various benefits. Nevertheless, playing with blocks, playing helps to develop skills that would be difficult to do uh, develop skills that would be difficult to we don't need this for a start by reading only is fine I think we should use enhance here playing with blocks helps to develop skills that would be difficult to enhance by reading only this is because when doing such an activity as building blocks a child can easily develop cognitive motor and sensory skills but how we haven't explained here, we've merely, um, we've essentially just, just said the same thing again, but giving names to the skills. What we need to do is talk about how the physical act of interacting with the blocks requires the child to plot <clears throat> objects in space and understand shapes and puzzles and how things fit together. I'm not saying all of that, but we need to think a little bit more deeply um, about our explanations. This is a good topic sentence um, because it describes the facts, it describes what this paragraph is going to talk about. It's going to talk about the skills that playing with blocks can develop. So I would expect your more specifically sentence, your second sentence, to talk more about how this happens and why it happens. And then we use the example to support your opinion. Because before you've given an example, this sentence is still just your opinion. It's not supported. It's not credible. So when we explain ourselves in the second sentence, we then go on to back ourselves up. For instance, recent studies by Harvard show that children playing with blocks for about three hours weekly, such as Lego, um, I would say blocks such as Lego. Keep it tidy. So recent studies by Harvard showed that children playing with blocks such as Lego for about three hours weekly outperformed their counterparts by 25% in psychometric tests. Therefore, conspicuous. There are conspicuous reasons why such activities should be incited um, as it gives the child an opportunity to progress in areas that cannot be achieved by reading only. So now we have a good... Um, we have good support and a good explanation, but it's this more specifically, this uh, this middle sentence here, that just needs to be expanded to give a proper explanation. Why do you think? Um, you don't necessarily have to give a factual account, but why do give an honest account? Why do you think that building blocks develops cognitive, motor, and sensory skills in children? You have. You have, a, you have it supported here, so you don't have to worry too much. You can just give us your opinion. So this is essentially, what is the topic of your belief? What is the nature of your belief? Why do you believe it? Or how do you think it works? Why do you believe this? What evidence do you have? How does this relate back to the question? Can you explain it to me? Uh, so that's the function of the four sentences that we're going to use in each paragraph. In light of the above, um, reading alone, and that doesn't mean reading on one's own, it means, means only reading. Reading alone may bestow on the child a rather academic bias. This is because sports, for instance, introduce, sports introduce, or sport introduces, Sports, for instance, introduce new dynamics such as motor skills and I would say here as well as instilling competition. 
introduce new dynamics such as motor skills as well as instilling competition because you've used a new verb here to talk about what's happening to competition we need to separate it that little bit further than using it um, after and if we were to use and here we would need the oxford comma here to make sure that we know they're not technically part of the same list because they're they're being uh, they're being applied in different ways using different verbs for example the british sport council noted that students who practice any kind of sport once a week we don't need that comma had a longer attention span than those who did not thus performing such activities is indispensable um So motor skills and competition, good. But then we go to attention span. So I think we should we should feature that in your opinion. Also, this topic sentence here describes reading alone may bestow an academic bias. But then we don't talk about that again, which is um, fundamentally incorrect because the topic sentence is supposed to describe what is about to happen in this paragraph. The first sentence of the paragraph should provide all the information necessary to understand what's coming. Uh, so reading alone may bestow an academic bias, cool, but then I would expect you to actually discuss that. Instead you've got on sidetrack talking about sports um, and attention span and then just that it's indispensable. So I feel that this paragraph could be better developed um, in this paragraph, you just need to better develop this sentence. But here we have um, a paragraph that's a little bit disconnected um, and a bit general. It's structurally correct. You've applied the structure well. You've gotten everything in the right order. Your grammar is good. Um, your lexical resource is fine. But we just need you to explore the idea more fully. We need you to express your opinion honestly and credibly in English. In accordance with the above arguments, I infer that in order for a child to develop his or her skills effectively, uh, one should involve children in other activities, other activities than mere academic training. This will give rise to more successful generations in the months and years to follow. Fine. So your grammar is good. Your your grasp of phrases is good. But again, we've missed out um, the core of the question. Skills and imagination. If we think about it, we can see that reading develops um, skills such as reading ability, um, attention span, spelling, uh, as well as um, encouraging imagination by requiring a child to picture the scenes in their head, to describe it to themselves using only words. So this is how reading develops skills and imagination. So if you want to argue that other activities do this better, you're going to have to provide just as detailed an explanation as to how it happens. It doesn't have to be correct. These are opinion pieces. Um, give us your honest opinion, support it with an example and explain it. That's all it needs. So, some people think that schools should be more entertaining, while others think that their sole purpose is to educate. Which do you agree with? So... I like the word conspicuous, and I'm going to leave it in, but you need to spell it correctly. Um, whether schools should include entertaining sessions or merely academic content, is a contentious issue which is growing in importance year on year. Great sentence. Um, for my money, that might be a little bit informal. What we could say here, for some really good complex language to use to give an opinion, I strongly advocate the inclusion of... I strongly advocate the inclusion of extracurricular activities such as music, art and sports. Since I consider them indispensable for conspicuous reasons. Uh, maybe this could do with being a bit more expanded. It's simply because um, we need... we. 
it, it just might need to be explained a little bit more in the intro. Um, well, I'll tell you what, actually, as long as this is expanded further down here, I'm okay with it. So we'll come back to this. So this essay will discuss the importance of such sessions using examples of their benefits sessions their benefits to demonstrate points and support arguments. To begin with, I believe that including entertaining activities such as, never use like, remember, in place of such as, such as art, music and sports in the academic curriculum has its benefits. This is because participating in such activities as music or drama, participating helps to develop uh, cognitive and learning skills. How? Furthermore, one can discover oh, we should have that there. One can discover new talents such as singing and acting, whereas for others it can serve as a relief from the academics from academic stress. We don't need that or that. Whereas for others it can serve as a relief from acad academic stress and thus aids in better concentration during lecture lectures. So you have included the how. What I would do is put this here, separated by a semicolon. Sorry, this has been formatted quite badly, so I'm just going to correct it as I go. This is because participating in such activities as music or drama helps to develop cognitive and learning skills. Um, actually, I would use more specifically here just to contextualize this sentence. So this is because participating in such activities uh, as music or drama helps to develop cognitive and learning skills. More specifically, one can discover new talents such as singing and acting, whereas for others it can serve as a relief from academic stress and thus aids in better concentration during lectures. And then we don't need this furthermore here. Cool, now I'm happy. For instance, a study by Harvard University cited five studies showing a positive um, relationship between academic achievement and athletic participation. Hence, comma, this evidence strengthens the fact uh, that such activities are beneficial. Strengthens the idea. If it's fact already, it doesn't need to be strengthened. Um, but if it's an idea or a theory, then further evidence can strengthen that idea or theory. Now we have a fully expanded paragraph. We have topic explanation, further explanation, um, study to back it up and a small explanation at the end. So that is now a well-developed paragraph. So, in view of the above, entertaining activities improve one's communication and socialising skills. Let's just say social skills and as well um, in British English we don't use the Z in socialising, it's an S. Um, but you may be sitting this in a non-British country or you may be emigrating to a non-British country. So I'm not going to penalise you for it. Uh, this is because in such instances, people connect with one another and learn from each other. What we could do is just apply this here. People connect with and learn from each other, expanding their own ideas, because we've used people here, the plural. People, um, in such instances, people connect with and learn from each other, expanding their own ideas. As a result, general knowledge is enhanced, making the individual a better person. This is subjective. If, if, if knowledge improves, the person is better, um, is very much an opinion. So we could say a more capable person, instead of, instead, then it's not so judgmental. As a result, general knowledge is enhanced, making the individual a more capable person. For instance, a study carried out by the Belgian Psychological Association, Association found that 20% of students who are not engaged in any scholastic entertaining activity suffer 
some form of socializing anomaly. And we've used the S here. Um, like what? Shall we say some form of social difficulty? And thus, it is conspicuous that such activities have positive implications. To sum up, we could just say, to sum up, I believe that fun and en engaging activities shall continue to thrive in education. After all, life is not merely academic, we could say, but it's self-enjoyable and enthralling. I'm trying to think of synonyms for things like fun and engaging. Enjoyable and enthralling. There we go. So well done for submitting your first essays. They were good. Um, your lexical resource and your grammar are really, really good. Uh, what we need to do is just get you to expand your ideas a bit more, get you in on those explanations. Uh, but I'll send this over to you now. Have a great day and I look forward to your next work.